Now I'm going to walk you through my lighting setup and we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to get this overall red vibe and really make it pop up the seamless. So let's start here with our key light. We've got a reflector on here with a grid right now. And um, you can really use any modifier for this if you want. Sometimes I'll throw a beauty dish on there as well. But I like the reflector because it adds some interesting um, shapes and some interesting textures and really gives us this kind of 3D pop to the image. And then in addition to that, we have our fill light here, which is just going to be a light bounced into a V-flat, which is going to give us a nice, broad, sweeping fill. It's going to be really soft. It's just going to bump up shadows. I don't want this to be a really contrasty shot. We have drama in the color, but we don't need drama in the shadows. So that is going to give us a nice fill. It's going to give us a lot of texture, a lot of detail, and then it's really just going to be about creating this really beautiful wash of red. When I shot my monochrome series, I shot it in my house, which is probably about, I don't know, a quarter of the size of this studio. Maybe not quite that small, but it's pretty small. Um, so this is something that you can do at home. I usually have my reflector pretty close to my model. Um, my V-flat is moved in a little bit more. I just throw a light and bounce off of that. So it's something that's fairly easy to do. You don't need a lot of space for it. And it's really just about this amazing color and showing it off. So it's a lot of pop, a lot of wow factor for not a lot of space and only two lights. Next, I am gonna just take a couple shots right here. I'm tethered so we can see our images on screen. And we'll just take a peek at what this looks like right now. Lens caps off. That light is bright. Okay, let's come up and tilt down a little bit. Power-wise, um, maybe like quarter a stop, but. Let's take a look at the shot, but first I just want to go over real quickly what we did with our lights here. Um, our fill light stayed exactly the same. Um, we took the grid off of our key light because I wanted to get a little bit more spill of that light onto her and just bring up the light a little bit. We also elevated the light and pointed it down um, so our shadow is kind of going off onto the side here instead of being more directly behind her. Um, so those are kind of the tweaks we did to our lighting. Now let's take a look at our image. I think the light looks great. We're getting pretty decent coverage head to toe here. We definitely have some shape to the shadows in her face, but that fill light is really bringing up the shadows and there's shape to it, which is cool, but we're also seeing all of the detail in there, which I really like. One thing that you'll notice here, which is really obvious, is this jacket in particular is reading really bright, really saturated, and definitely a lot redder than everything else. So these are the things that are kind of going through my head and thinking, okay, well, if I can't do anything about this while I'm shooting, that's something I'm gonna have to address in post. So, so we're using a real gel on here. Um, confession time, I sometimes use cellophane um, instead of a real gel, which works in a pinch. You can get it at a craft store for super cheap but um, it will melt if you have a modeling light on or if you're shooting too fast and your light gets really hot. So fair warning, I learned that lesson the hard way. So let's take a peek at how our image looks with this gel. And in theory, what it's gonna be doing is it's gonna add kind of a base layer of red to the shadows in the image. So this is gonna stay the same. Um, our highlights should have a similar color tone to what we get in this image but now we're just adding a little bit of red to the shadows and hopefully that'll tie things together a bit. So let's see what that looks like. Um, by the way, if you have a really um, intense gel like this, sometimes you'll have to raise the power of the light a little bit, um, which we haven't done yet, but um, we'll see how this looks and then if we need to adjust it, we can.
So taking a look on our screen here, you can see a huge difference before and after if I come up here. So notice how everything in the before image is a little bit pinker. We definitely have a lot of distinction between different shades of red. And if we go down here, I mean, we basically have solved our color mismatching problem. Everything has this really nice wash of red from this fill here. We're definitely getting some on her face, which doesn't bother me, but one of the ways that we could mitigate that if we wanted is we could just play with the ratios of the light. So we could take this light and we could bring it up a little bit in intensity or bring this down and then that is going to be doing most of the work on the highlights of her face and we won't get as much of a color cast. But I actually quite like this. It looks like she almost has a bit of a glow to it, which to me is great because we're talking about the sort of warmth of red and then playing off that with the coolness of the clothing. So I think it works quite well. I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. So I think from here we can start getting more into the concept and playing around with the conceptual aspect of it and posing and work into that. <laughs>